Hello everyone, it's Justin again. Thanks for joining me today. I got a really cool gift in the mail. An egg. But not just any egg, it's called a poissanka, and it's a traditional Ukrainian Easter egg. This is a type of artwork that the people who live in the country of Ukraine have been creating for thousands of years. They were making these eggs even before they ever celebrated Easter. I didn't bring it with me here because I don't want it to break. It's made from a real eggshell. But you can see what these types of decorated eggs look like in these photos. Sometimes they're made of wood. Aren't they beautiful? The patterns and colors on the Poissanka tell a story through symbols, such as the sun, stars, or flowers. The beautiful designs are made using a technique called batik. It uses wax and dyes, and as you can see in these eggs, some are very detailed and take a lot of patience to make. I received the egg along with a letter from a girl who lives in Ukraine. It was so sweet of her that she wanted to share a part of her culture and tradition. So stay tuned to learn more about life in a country far away in this episode of Let's Take a Journey, Ukraine. Ready to dive into learning about Ukraine? Let's go. Hello, Justin. My name is Solomia, and I'm eight years old. I live in the city of Kyiv. That's the capital of Ukraine. Let's go to our map. We are here in the United States, which is part of the continent of North America. To find Ukraine, we go across the Atlantic Ocean to the continent of Europe. There's the country, Ukraine. And let's zoom in to find Solomia's city, Kyiv. Okay, let's keep reading. We have cold winters with a lot of snow. I love making snowmen, and my friends and I have snowball fights. Summers here are warm, and our parks have flowers everywhere. My friends and I go to the playground near my apartment building. My mom takes me to art classes at the Children's Center. We paint and do crafts. That's where I made your poisanka. I hope you like it. <laughs> so, Lamia, I love my gift. Thank you so much. I'm being very careful with it because I know how fragile it is and how much time you put into it. My mom is teaching me how to embroider. It's kind of like drawing pictures by sewing. Someday I will make my own Vyshivanka. That's a special, traditional shirt with pretty designs. My mom says it's like wearing a piece of our history. On weekends, my family takes walks by the Dnipro River. It flows right through Kyiv. I like going to school because my class does fun things. Last week, my class went to the Kyiv Monastery of the Caves. It's an Orthodox Christian monastery with underground caves. Wow. Look at all these golden steeples. I've heard about this historic place. It has underground caves and tunnels where religious monks lived and prayed. And they're even buried there. Summer vacation is the most fun. My family usually goes to the Carpathian Mountains. We hike and see beautiful landscapes. Ukraine has many farms. Sometimes we're called the breadbasket of Europe because we grow so much corn, barley, and wheat. Guess what else we grow? Here are some hints. They're tall. They have seeds. They're yellow and make us happy and think of bright sunny days. Can you guess? Let's see. Tall, seeds, happy sunny days. Can you guess? What do you think Solomia is talking about? My country leads the world in growing sunflowers. We send our sunflower oil, seeds, and flowers all around the world. Wow, did you guess sunflowers? <laughs> I didn't know that. What a sight to see those rows and rows of sunflowers. Sometimes you go to another big city in Ukraine, Odessa. It's near the Black Sea. I built a sandcastle on the beach, and everyone came over to look at it. <laughs> Let's
let's quickly look at our map one more time. Here's the country of Ukraine. Here's Kyiv, the capital city where Solomia lives. And to the south, you can see Odessa. And there's the Black Sea. All right, back to the letter. What kind of music do you like? I listen to American hip hop, especially when I dance. My mom listens to Skriabin. They're a popular rock band here. My aunt plays the bandura, our country's traditional instrument. A bandura, so interesting. It, it seems like kind of a combination of a harp and a guitar. My dad and mom go to work every day, so my grandmother and granddad come over to stay with me in the afternoon. I call my grandma Babusia, and I call my grandpa Didush. They live in a village just outside Kyiv. They have a garden where we pick strawberries. My mom works in IT with computers. Ukraine has a lot of tech companies. My dad is a journalist. He writes news stories for one of my country's biggest newspapers. He loves to ask questions. He says that's why he's so good at his job. Our flat is small, but I love it, and it feels cozy to me. Because I'm the only kid, I get my own room. Thanks for sharing about your family, Solomia. Is there anything about her family life that's pretty much the same as yours? What's something that's quite different? In school, we learn different languages. Besides my native language, Ukrainian, I speak English and Spanish. The Ukrainian alphabet is different from your English alphabet. Whoa, it sure is. First off, our alphabet has 26 letters, and the Ukrainian alphabet has 33. Do you see any letters that look like the ones you know? I see A and B. B, but there's a letter in between them that is new to me. Oh, good. She's going to teach us some Ukrainian words. Mria means a dream. Mria. Say it with me, and we could both learn how to speak Ukrainian. Mria. Dream. Nezabarom means soon. Okay, now let's say this one. Nezabarom. There you go. Now... When you get asked, when will you clean up your mess? You can say, Nezabarom, soon. My country is known for its rich history, beautiful nature, historic buildings, and hardworking people. We also have delicious food. My baba makes the best pea soup in the whole world. Mmm, served with fresh bread, I can go for some of that right now. <laughs> And she makes pampushki, which are Ukrainian buns. I help my mom make vareniki. Those are dumplings. She fills them with potatoes and we eat them with fried onions and sour cream. You can make sweet ones too and fill them with berries. It seems as though every nationality has its own type of dumpling or stuffed dough. You may remember Kiana from India talking about samosas and how Lily, who lives in China, eats her dumplings with chopsticks. You'll hear about empanadas in an upcoming video on Colombia. We could do a whole lesson just on dumplings around the world. My neighbor has a really cute dog named Ivan. I hope to get a dog from the local shelter. My mom says I can when I'm a little older, but I do have a little cat. Manx cats don't have tails. Her name is Nika. Last Christmas, I dressed her up, and she was not too happy about it. Ooh, cute outfit, but she looks like she's saying, Oh, I'm going to get you back for this. <laughs> Maybe you can come visit my family in Ukraine. We can go to the Ivana Kupala Night Festival. It celebrates summer. Friends and neighbors get together, and we make wreaths from fresh flowers. We put candles in the wreaths and then let them float along the water. People dance around a big bonfire. Some people even jump over a fire. Even though it's supposed to bring good luck, I don't think it would be good luck for me. Oh, I love learning about different holidays and traditions all around the world. What's one of your traditions that you would want to share with Solomia? So, 
That's my life in Ukraine. Oh, and one more thing. When I grow up, I want to be a doctor or a race car driver. Bye for now, your friend, Solomia. Doctor or a race car driver? Maybe she can be both. Thank you so much, Solomia. I really enjoyed reading your letter to our friends, and thank you again for my beautiful Poisanka. What did Solomia talk about that is kind of the same for you? What things are different? Be sure to take a look at the PDF that goes along with this video. It has fun facts and activities relating to this lesson that I think you'll really enjoy. All right, are you ready to stamp our passport? I'll see you again soon. And until next time, friends, remember to always be clever.